Hi, I'm Tyler Grant for Jamplay.com. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to play a good guitar break or a solo over a bluegrass song in the key of C. And we're going to use the New River Train that we learned in uh, one of the previous lessons in this series. <laughs> Okay, let's take that solo and break it down. Realize that I'm using some standard licks in here. Um, we'll get to those. Uh, but mainly, I'm targeting the melody notes. So remember this, this, t this song begins with... Riding on that new river train. So, I'm going to start my solo by alluding to that. So that's the first lick. One more time real slow. Ready and go. So you see how I'm taking that song melody and kind of making a little bit of a fiddle tune out of it just by putting some fiddly licks in it. And this bluesy lick with the flatted third. Then I immediately get into some of my fun flat picking stuff. Uh, as soon as I land on this root note, remember that lick from their bluegrass licks lesson. So that's uh, a C note, your root, and then upstroke on the low E, and then chromatic up to the G, and then open A, chromatic up to C. So that lick, ready, go. But it doesn't stop there. I keep ascending using that idea to get to the higher octave. So when I get into this low lick, I'll keep it going by doing this. So that in itself is a fun, uh, a fun little, little idea, especially if I break it down this way, starting on the G and go chromatic from the open A to the C, and then open D, chromatic up to the second fret, open G, chromatic up to the second fret, open B, and the root. So put that all together, starting on the low G and ascending, and it sounds like this. Ready and go and. So you could take this, this is actually a common tag. Uh, if, someone, if someone gave the question of the tag like this, you could answer going. So there it is, broken into a neat little chunk that stands on its own. But uh, this, the way it works in this break is I'm kind of putting this all together to make a bigger statement. So it's several little pieces put together. Um, but the way I think and the way I hear these ideas, I try to get a little idea and extend it and extend it and extend it into a longer idea. So that entire lick sounds like this. So did you hear how I extended it all the way up and then I kept going? That's, that gives you kind of a roller coaster ride of excitement if you take a big swooping bass run and just keep it going all the way up and turn it into another lick. So by the time I get up to this high root, I'm starting to kind of play with some sequences like that kind of thing. Specifically I'm playing this by the time I get to the high root, ready and go and. Just hearing that lick, did you hear where the five chord happened? Where the chord change went from the C to the G7? Well, it happened immediately on this downbeat where I played the first fret. 
because that note is the seventh of the G7 chord. So I was targeting it at that downbeat where the chord change happens. So here's the entire first half of that break. One, two, ready, go. That's a great place to take a little pause. Uh, one thing that we don't want to do, even though this is a flashy, exciting, busy style of guitar playing, is we don't want to overplay. So I'm going to take a pause until the next idea comes around. So you hear how this is like several ideas kind of crammed together into one long phrase. And then I'll take a breath, as if I'm singing, You've got to take a breath every now and then, and then I'll move on to the next idea. So the second half of this break, uh, I get into a really kind of stock standard C bluesy lick, which goes like this. Now that's a really bouncy kind of bluesy thing, um, mostly kind of from the style of Doc Watson. You could take that little idea and loop it in a nice way. You can even get that little, little bluesy bend, because that is the flat third. And it's resolving to the major third, which is the open E string. So you hear this a lot in flat picking. But like I said, I like to extend one idea into another idea and make a longer phrase. So this phrase, uh, Continuing through the C chord goes like this. Ready and go. So that is simply a C major pentatonic scale from the root down to the octave. So you put that first lick together, and when I land on the root, I'll just play that C pentatonic on the way down. Remember this one? That's a really common sound too. So you see that's three different ideas put together into one grand idea. From there I move on to the F chord, and the lick I do on that is uh, starts off as kind of a sequence, then turns into kind of a bluesy lick, and it goes like this. So there I am on the four chord in the key of C, and remember on the four chord we can use those bluesy ideas because the four chord has a dominant seventh on it, F7, you know, if you're in a blues. So that's why I'm going up to this flatted third of the key, because it is the flatted seven of the F chord. So it's really similar to this lick we learned on the four chord in the bluegrass licks lesson. So you hear that seven of the, of the F chord. So here's that lick on the F chord one more time. Ready and go and. Then I get to my, my last G chord, my five chord. And so I wanna do uh, something that relates to that, but also ties this whole thing together and brings it back home. I don't wanna end up high, I wanna end up low, bringing it back home to where we started. So here's the G chord, uh, and the lick that happens on it is. So that last little C run played that already, but it's just a little punctuation to bring us back to the one. So from the G chord to the end, it goes like this. Ready and go and. Mm -hmm. 
So let's play this entire break together at a slow tempo. Here we go. One, two, ready and go. <laughs> Now learn that and take it to your next bluegrass jam and you'll turn some heads for sure. So using this lesson as well as uh, the previous lesson where we learned a bunch of standard licks, uh, I'm hoping that you'll gain some vocabulary and be able to make uh, clear statements in this style, just like you're learning a new language. So take it from here and move into some of your own ideas and even if you have to sit down and write down some ideas, that's fine. Uh, but come up with some of your own ideas and take off uh, using this style. Um, you, could, you could play the rhythm track and record the rhythm track or use the, the rhythm that's on the supplemental materials on this lesson and play along at, at a slow tempo and start trying to improvise some of your own ideas through this. But just remember, always keep that song going through your head as you go. Don't take off too much from the melody of the song. You want to tie it in there somehow. So I'll try to demonstrate, I'll put on the rhythm track, and I'm just going to try to incorporate some of these ideas and take off and try to create some new ones as I go. So, so watch this demonstration and I'll improvise and uh, try to come up with another cool break. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Thanks for joining me in this lesson. I hope you've gained some good bluegrass vocabulary and uh, learned a nice new break for New River Train. And uh, this is Tyler Grant for jamplay.com. We'll see you in the next lesson.